NFL Week 11 previews brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful, incredible, awesome sports books. They got the the Fitz Casino, Sam's Town, Hollywood, Horseshoe, First Jackpot, and Gold Strike Casino. Man. You notice how I tossed them all around in that? Nailed it. Still nailed it. Still nailed it. You can find more information over TunicaTravel.com. They got everything you need to know about the sports books down in Tunica, Mississippi. So go check them out. Go check us out. WinningCuresEverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that little subscribe button. You'll figure out exactly when we're posting videos. We do a whole bunch of them every week. We're talking football all the time. So let's uh, let's jump in. We're not going to Mexico City anymore. We're not. We're going to Los Angeles. We're going to Los Angeles now. Uh, and I have not gotten to read a whole lot about this, but like the Chiefs and Rams... Now they the NFL makes teams reserve their home stadium for the date of the game just in case something like this happens. Did you hear why the game is not being played in Mexico City? Well the field, right? Well it's it's the field, but do you know what happened to the field? Well they had a concert there. Do you know who the concert was? No. Shakira. That's probably a pretty great concert, <laughs> by the way. I, I, I like I, Shakira. I don't man. know that. Yeah, I don't know that I would She's, say if whew. it wasn't the Chiefs and the Rams, I'd say I might rather take the, the Shakira concert over the game. Yeah, but it's the Chiefs and the Rams, and but this it's is the a Chiefs huge and the Rams, deal. and I'm going to this. Who man? But yeah, Shakira, man, uh, you you seen her do the belly dancing thing? Nah, She's like, shaking. I've, the... I've seen her shake more than I probably should. Oh, wow. She's fire. That's a that's a beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. Chiefs against the Rams in L. A. Rams minus two and a half. The over under is the biggest over under in the history of is it Monday Night Football or just the NFL period? Uh, I I would bet the NFL. All right, so what, you know I what? might be wrong. You know, what? it's that. our show. We can say whatever the hell we want to. This is the biggest over under in NFL history. We've been wrong plenty. Sixty three, <laughs> sixty three and a half points. Seventy something percent of statistics are all made up on the spot. Exactly. Sixty five. Monday, 7.15 p.m. It's on ESPN. These are two high-powered offenses. Two low-powered defenses at the moment. Correct. A lot of big names on both defenses. A lot of star power. A lot of big names on coaching staff. Well, yeah, no. I mean, this This is is... a pretty big deal. Like Andy Reid against Sean McVay. You got Wade Phillips over there doing his thing, which he's supposed to be better than he is right now. But, you know, whatever. It's it's fine. Uh, He's got time to, to fix this. You got Pat Mahomes, you got Jared Goff, two of the brightest young stars in the NFL. You got uh, uh, Hill, you got uh, uh, Gurley. I mean, you got all kind of different dudes. You do not have Cooper Cup. Do not have Cooper Cup out for the year. Does that make a difference in this game? No, I don't think that will be the reason. If the Rams don't win, it won't be because they didn't have Cup to make one big play. I think they've got enough big play stars on this Rams team to just do do just fine against the Chiefs. Is this in your game of the picks? It is not. Yeah, I'm staying away from it too. <laughs> I'm going to. I will, I will have money. I will be one of the dummies betting the over. Yo, I'm yeah. Just, I'm just going to do it. That's it. But I'll do that probably closer to game time. Like it, cause no, I this, think it's going up. It, I, I feel like you and I do the same thing. I think like, it's going up. We I'm say that we're now. staying away from a game, and then we sit down to watch it, and like right before it kicks off, it's like, no, I'm okay. not. No, no. When I tell you I'm not taking a side, I'm not taking a side. I'm okay. Just, unless this line moved drastically, I'm not taking a side. Okay. Okay. Uh, right now it's minus two and a half for the Rams. If it got to, does two and a half seem like a lot, or is it fine no, because I, it's in I, La, it, care less. It's I, in LA. In LA doesn't change anything either. Um, if this guy game got to where I could, I could tease one side being more than a favorite dog. Uh, more than yeah, more than sorry, a touchdown dog that didn't make any sense. Favorite dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> then then I would take the I would tease it with another game and take the dog, or I just tease it with the over. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Um, I will say this: the Chiefs were what eight and one against the spread until last week, and I mean they were like a seventeen point favorite over the Cardinals. They had to get big. They, they just did what they had to do to get through the week. Didn't care about blowing them out or anything so it it worked out okay uh so they're eight and two against the spread the rams are what like four and five against yeah the spread? they i mean they've kind of but they've had some huge numbers let's say yeah they've had some big spreads now that it's two and a half it's like eh, who knows 
Uh, I will probably roll with the Chiefs on this. Like it's not it, it's not my gambling picks, nothing like that. But you know, I'm kind of like you as far as eh, if they look kind of equal. Give me the probably going to go with the dog. Yeah, you know, I'll probably take Chiefs money line. You get you get positive odds in a coin flip. Yeah, and I'm good with that. Because if Mahomes gets the ball last, that would yeah, I'll that would pretty be good. Because I really do believe the team that gets the ball last is going to win this game. Yeah, I do agree with that. Let's uh, let's move on from that. Game number two is not quite as good as the oh, first game, game, but it's still it's a, a good game. Really, like any other week, this would have been game number one. Okay, I'm, I'll give you that. Vikings at the Bears. Bears two and a half point favorites now. By the way, the lines are coming to you from. I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's lost in the sea of. It's lost in the sea of papers. Uh, They're coming from first. The, no first one can read that anyway. So just, just well, yeah, you're hold right. Up, hold up anything and say this is where the lines are. <laughs> the lines are from first, first jackpot. jackpot. Did give us the lines. Yes, though. down in Tunica, Mississippi. We're not making that up. They are a William Hill property. Um, so yeah, currently, uh, as of today, the sheet says the Bears are a two and a half point favorite. Over under is forty five and a half. Sunday, 7.20 p.m., NBC, Sunday Night Football at Soldier Field. I wish there was a game going on when I'm going to Chicago in December. There's not. They're going to be in San Francisco. But either way. You used to watch the game there, which is a lot of fun, by the way. You can watch the game at Soldier Field? No, or? like oh, okay. in Chicago <laughs> at a sports bar. Oh, yeah. You get to, like, we don't have that luxury being in Memphis and not having, like, a real home team. That's that's to, true. like, go to a sports bar in an NFL town and yeah, say, the, I'm going to take this in. <laughs> the hometown team for Memphis is uh, is the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Cowboys, depending on what side of town you're God. on. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Throw up. Uh, all right, so the Bears' defense, pretty good. Uh, they this will easily be the best team that they have beaten all year if they beat the Vikings. Oh, if they can beat the Vikings, we have they, to take they've them. beaten what the Cardinals, the Jets, the Bucks, the Forty uh, uh, Nine. Did they? No, they hadn't done the Forty Nine yet. The, um, I'll tell you this: if they beat the if they beat the Vikings, we got to take them serious. Oh yeah, I mean they they're not. But their six wins are oh, oh the Lions. They they beat the crap yeah. out of the Lions. They beat the Seahawks. Seahawks were the best team they played, and the Seahawks the are still team? a losing team. They have not beaten a team with a, an above 500 record as of yet. And the Vikings are 5-3. and three. So, yeah, I mean, that, we'll see. Like, I, I feel like they're for real. That defense definitely looks for real. But uh, it's tough to get, get that Vikings team out I'm of I'm excited head. about this game. I have no feel for it whatsoever. Um, I think it could be close. The line's a little low. I, I thought uh, that – don't know that it's low at all. I, I would be scared. It wouldn't surprise me if the Vikings blow them out. It wouldn't surprise me if the Bears blow the Vikings. I mean, nothing would shock me in this game. I like both of these teams a lot, so it's hard for me to kind of gauge it. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm with you on that because um, I'm kind of in the same boat. This isn't my gambling picks, though, so I will, I will forward you over to the gambling picks video. Interesting. Texans minus three at the Redskins. Over under is forty two and a half. Sunday, twelve PM, CBS at FedEx Field. Ah, <sighs> inland over Maryland. How do you feel about this one? Before the season, this looked kind of like a eh, yeah, kind of match. Be like, like loser leaves town match. Yeah, coach gets fired match, and now yeah. they're both. And now they're, they're both they're, leading their division. They're, they're leading their division by like two games and a sixteen game schedule, which yep. is a massive lead. Uh, <laughs> and and both of them are six and three, like I I don't think the Redskins have looked good at all, at all in like three or four weeks. Houston's looked pretty good, but I feel like every win they get, the other team is just giving it to them. And I don't think that the Redskins do. At that. least the Redskins have taken some wins. They they fought for them. Yeah. I mean, that, we I mean, literally hear team. Bill O'Brien run off the field laughing at the other coach for screwing up so he can get the win. This has happened three or four times this season. It is bananas. I, I like it's. I just don't. It's get, happened in almost every like in five of their six wins. I know, which makes me wonder why the Texans are a three-point favorite. It's a very questionable line. Especially oh, the, on the road. The line the line stinks. Unless 
unless people are just going to buy into Deshaun Watson and and Hopkins and, and uh, they're Demarius coming, Thomas, they're coming off a bye week. They got Demarius Thomas, and, and the, you know what? It might be right. I mean, Texans might go in there and just whip their butt. It's possible, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll this, see. It, it's in my gambling picks. Is it, oh God! Is it in yours? Yes, it's in my gambling picks too. Which means that we might need to figure this out before you, we do you it. bastard. <laughs> no, I'm not changing my NFL picks. Okay, I don't okay. have enough of them. Well, you've done pretty good on those, so. Yeah, if I if I match up with you, I feel like we're okay. Uh, we both hit the Chargers last week. I'm not matching you in college anymore. That's totally fine. We'll get to that later. <laughs> game number four: <laughs> the Packers at the Seahawks. This is a Thursday night game. I think this game. All three of the primetime games, by are the way, this pretty, week are pretty good. Not, not pretty good. I think they're all like this is one where the NFL primetime schedule guys are like, we did a good job. Yeah, it's like we we've we sucked did, every other week. We did but a this really is right. good job. All three games. I think it's going to be a fun game. Oh, I think it is too. It's every, a lot of offense. Every Seattle game that I've watched this year has. I haven't watched all of them. Uh, they've never lost by more than like but, what? What did they lose by all, Sunday? Five. Yeah, all of like, all of the Seattle games have been fun this year. Yes, all of them, hundred percent, because they all come down to the wire. And the Packers, That's what Russell will, Wilson does, and the Packers will make this fun also. Oh yeah, I mean oh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that, this game will be great. The uh, the over under is forty nine and a half. It's Thursday, seven twenty p.m. on Fox. It's in Seattle. Russell Wilson's fun, man. Like he's, he's he's really good. And they they have had a tough schedule to start out this season. Not just a tough schedule. I don't know that there's a lot of offensive talent on this team. Like I didn't think Seattle was going to be good this year because I don't believe in Lockett. I don't believe in Bolden. They have no tight end to speak of. They have four different running backs and nobody knows any of them's name. And I don't know which one's good. I don't know that any of them are good. And we and we didn't think that the offensive line was all. No, and good. I didn't think the offensive line was going to be good at all. And, and now all those like mismatch, it's it's like the island of misfit toys and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's right, and, they're they, doing, and they just kind of work. They're together. doing great. Brian Schottenheimer's your offensive coordinator. I mean, the yeah. king of the island of misfit toys. The the king of getting Mark Rick fired at Georgia. What's up? I think Rick did that to himself. Well, that's kind of weird. Way off topic, by the way. Way off topic. It's twice too. Uh. I read an article today. This is this. I, I, I was not expecting. You know, this is not going to be. It, it, this isn't an NFL Do thing. We're going to bring want. it up. Do uh, it's your show. They uh, they said that Mark Rick does not accept transfers at Miami. Okay. Is that weird? No, I don't think that's weird at all. How many coaches do you know of that don't accept transfers? He doesn't like. He's consistent. Your yes. your boy, who's not consistent. Who, if one of his kids want to transfer, gets up on a podium in front of a hundred thousand people and calls him a quitter, but then will take any other transfer that wants to come to him. At least he's consistent. But nobody would ever compare the moral fortitude of Nick Saban and Mark Rick. Like, like that's just not. It, there's nothing you can use to measure that. The difference that they are. No, you're right. So I don't think that's weird at all. I just thought it was strange. I I, I have not heard of a I would college accept, coach that would I not would accept, accept transfers. transfers. But if but if if I was going to be strong on, I I think kids should honor their commitments. Then you gotta you gotta be strong with it both ways. That okay. door has to swing both ways. Okay. I can't call my kids quitters, and take other people's quitters and say I want them on my team. That's a good point. Good point. All right. Off of that, back that back to NFL. Uh, you you leaning one way or the other on the Seahawks? Seahawks Packers? Yeah, it's in my gambling picks. All right, we will leave that one alone then. Uh, Cowboys at the Falcons. Falcons minus three. Over under is 48. Sunday noon, Fox at Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta. I'm a bet this one's in your gambling picks. Oh, well, yeah. It's in mine too. What have I done all year? I know. It didn't, I know. It didn't work every week. It didn't work last week. I lost it, money. Yeah, it didn't work last week. But it's um, okay. And this is more of a, this is that loser leave town kind of matchup. Like no, I, neither one of the no coaches chance. I think are going to get fired no, because of this game. No chance. But I think the loser of this game misses the playoffs. I don't think the Cowboys have a snowball's chance in hell of making. I don't think either one of these teams have a chance of making the playoffs. The winner of this game. Right the winner of this game gets back to five and five. Okay, that's not going to make it in the NFC, man. That's not going to make it. I think nine and seven will probably make. No, it No sir. NFC. No sir. 
What, what are you looking at? Well, the, the Vikings and, and, and the Bears, one of those teams is going to win the division. The other one's going to take a wild card spot, and they're going to be better than both of these teams. I assure you I mean, you the Vikings that. have a tie. So oh, like, They're still going to have nine wins. Well, they're 5-3-1 and one right now. So their now. nine win team is going to be a whole lot better than a nine and seven team. Well, the Vikings still have to play the Packers. they got to play the Bears twice, okay. right? So anyway, one of, I think one of those teams is getting a wild card spot. And then, okay. <laughs> See, like, what, the, the Seahawks? Oh, uh, no, the Panthers, man. Don't, don't don't squash out the Panthers. They've got three losses, dude. They got, is it three or is yeah, it? Yeah, uh, I thought they only had two losses going into the Steelers game. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. And the Steelers only have two losses, right? No, it's two. We're not talking about the AFC. No, no, no. I was, I was trying to think because it was a matchup of two two-loss teams. Yeah, they're, they're still six and three. So yeah, no. Okay. This team is not beating the Panthers, the Falcons, or the Cowboys. Neither one of these teams are making the playoffs, Gary. I, well, I tell you this: the loser has way less of a chance than the than the winner, well, which okay. is why I put it in here. All right. Uh, let's talk about some honorable mention games. Roll this thing out. Titans at the Colts. Colts. See, this game is better than the other game. Colts two and a half point favorite. I feel like that's all right. I mean, it's yeah, it might be better. And and I think one of these teams can make the playoffs because oh, they can win their division. Yes, Sunday noon on uh, CBS. Steelers minus five and a half at the Jags. Uh, this is not a game. This is uh, this is only a game because the Jags beat the hell out of the Steelers twice last year in Pittsburgh. Yeah, well they they beat the hell out of them once. The, and the then game they beat in the playoffs, the, so they and, beat them again. And, and they beat them in the playoffs. That's another Sunday noon game on CBS. Uh, this Jags team is not that Jags team. Another Sunday CBS game at noon. Bengals at the Ravens. There's no line on it yet because we don't know what's going on with Joe Flacco, which kind of makes this a little interesting, right? Yeah. I don't. It, it's not a he's hurt thing, right? It, well, it, his hip. Like, there's a problem with his hip. Okay, so he's, it's not it a is, it, Yeah, it's an injury. But because, because there are talks that... Lamar Jackson might start. Lamar Jackson might start because Harbaugh is already – and maybe I read something. I don't even know where to, who to credit for this. But I know that I read somewhere Harbaugh's in negotiations to, like, buy his contract out already at the end of the year. Like, like we know I'm not going to be back, and so let me just put Lamar in and see if I can catch fire in a bottle and just say maybe we can do something special here. And if we don't. I don't lose anything because I'm already gone. That wouldn't make any sense. I, I'm literally talking just com- – maybe I dreamed it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if it that's, doesn't – If that's you know, true this, and anybody knows that It article, doesn't sound dumb because, like, Harbaugh has been there forever. If I thought I was going to get fired, I would absolutely be playing Lamar Jackson to say maybe it turns our season around. Yeah, because if you play RG3 – well, no, God, RG3, no. No, but what I'm saying is no, if you no play... No, like, legitimate person thinks that RG3 should be playing. If you play RG3, the reason behind that is because you are paranoid. No, you're not. You play RG3, it's because you're drunk. You need to put the bottle down. Because <laughs> you're an idiot. That's a, No, you you just try not to, like... It RG3 is not an NFL quarterback. Yeah, but a lot of people you, don't think Lamar Jackson is either. They don't know that because they haven't seen him play quarterback in the NFL. You can think whatever you want. We have seen RG3 play. He was really yeah. good his rookie year. And after, that's about it. After they got tape on him, he all of a sudden stopped being good at quarterback and he breaks like fine china. Just Yeah. Uh, the other honorable mention game, Eagles at the Saints. Um, I mean, the Saints are blowing teams out. This line uh, and the, is – And the Eagles – I I thought they were going to flip a switch in November and be good, and they didn't. They didn't. They're just. This is just. They're just not good. They yeah. won the Super Bowl and they're like, screw it. Yeah, we're we're done. Um, this was supposed to be the marquee matchup of the yes, weekend. I agree. Like it was not supposed to be Chiefs Rams before the season started. It was not supposed to be Chicago and the Vikings. Oh no. no. Uh, Eagles Saints was like, okay, that's the one we're gonna Sorry. like. That's that's the Fox Sunday afternoon slot, like the most watched slot, like. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, to say the least. All right, that's going to wrap up the Week 11 previews. We've given you all the numbers, all the things you need to know to be a winner. Go down to Tuning, Mississippi. Get your action in on your favorite games. 
tunicatravel.com will tell you more information on all six of their sports books. You can get our picks, our previews, everything else over at winningcureseverything.com. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button.